going out for a little quick motor sail in the drizzle with the lads. So that was eventful, we just, just touched the top of the gate because although the gate was open, I misjudged it and we were going out with the same depth on the lines that we've been out on before, but of course the boat's heavier laden and I didn't, I didn't think. So it wasn't a, a bump that you could even hear. We just felt it touch the top of the gate, you know, backed off and, uh, and um, uh, it, the boat just rode up very slightly on top of the gate top, uh, it's fine. So, uh, and we've obviously checked the bilge, there's nothing coming in, but next time we lift out, I'll, uh, I'll check the front of the keel, but I, I don't think there's gonna be even a, a scratch, because it was such a light, like a ding, <laughs> and uh, we're like, oh no, wait five minutes and try again. We're now going, we're going down towards Port Dinorwick and down towards Menai Bridge and Britannia Bridge. Kelvin's first time sailing a boat. Hello. John's here with us. <laughs> I'll introduce Kel John later. Um, and we are actually sailing now. Now, here's the thing. We are going at the Menai Straits. It was pouring with rain when we left, going up the Menai Straits towards Britannia Bridge on jib alone. And Mike Osler, you're going to say, what are you doing? Why have you just got your jib up? Oh, well, we're pootling along and we're just going very drifty downwind. I like watching it. That's why. And uh, I could put the main up, but the main sail that was your old sail, Mike, is too small for this boat, so it doesn't really fit. The one that was on the boat is torn and tattered and knackered. Uh, this one is baggy as all hell, so excuse my language. This one's baggy as heck. Um, so we have actually got some really exciting news about sails. But there you go, we're uh, sailing motor engine off and we are making our way up the Menai Straits towards the bridges and we might go through the swellies um, or we might not. We might just decide to keep it chill and stay this side and go back to Carnarvon, but just having a nice little poodle. It's literally right where it needs to be. Yeah, it is, isn't it? Yep, yeah, yeah. These are the two. Can you see these two tran these two pylons here? Yeah. They're the transits. So we keep going now on this track until they're in line. On on behind us. Mark up there, is that the princess one? Yeah. Okay. You go between that one and the little dripping rock. Going very nicely. We've just gone through the swellies. Look at this, very nice. Uh, this is John. John is uh, one of our followers on YouTube and has come to help uh, do some work on the boat, which we're going to see over the next few days. The plan, I think, John, is bilge pumps, water pumps, heating system. You might have seen John on other prominent YouTube channels. Right, Mark. Um, and uh, yeah, he's, he's here with us now. Uh, one would think he's got an ulterior motive, but I don't think he has. We'll find out over the next couple of days. Um, anyway, yes, that is Menai Bridge that we've just been under. It's a horrible, nasty, drizzly, clammy, sticky, horrible day. Um, but it's quite fun to be out with the lads. So one of the things that this has highly t highlighted to us in this trip is, uh, it's only a short day sail, but we need to get the lid on this sharpish-ish because we're having to keep the hatch shut because the drizzle's going straight down because we don't have a spray hood anymore. Um, so that, that is sort of something I want to do fairly quickly. There's a few changes 
going to make I want to make to this uh, frame it's nothing nothing serious but just a few kind of oh yeah, I can tweak that and tweak that um, but basically this is done and I need to just get the lid on so this is very very lovely it's a horrible grizzly day as you've seen grizzly grizzly but yeah nice to get the boat out and up through the swellies and back just a little sail up to the bridges and back it makes a world of difference here is our cockpit locker what is now empty so let me give you the lie of the land this here is our exhaust water baffle steering system water pipes to the aft cabin calorifier here are our bilge pump outlets the whole hot water system and cold water system is leaking somewhere the next thing that i need to show john and you guys if you've not seen it if you've seen other episodes you will have done is this area which is we've got to go from this we've got two bilges one here in the saloon and one here under the battery bay and the engine bay so we're going to remove the steps and get everything out from there probably the most one of the most difficult jobs on a boat i think is routing cables and routing pipe pipes that bilge i'm going to give it another mop and this bilge and we're going to start properly running the pipe work uh, john uh, is removing the old bilge pump pipes so we can sort of really reroute them properly again uh, and get rid of the ones that are poor quality so we're going to replace it with better quality pipe do you want that straight there piece that too We're now into the routing pipe phase. We've got the bilges emptied and, you know, I could spend the whole day cleaning the bilges, not gonna do that phase. Are we gonna start at the pump end and work what out, or are we gonna start at the skin fitting and work in? Skin fitting and work in. Right. This is Andy in the hole. What we're currently doing is we're uh, figuring out, we're trying to figure out the, the best way to route all of these pipes for the bilge pumps. Um, and, the bottom line is there is no best way. At the moment, you'll notice that I've got these water pipes fairly close to the RCDs. Um, and what I've got to try and do is make sure that I move the RCDs out from that location at a later date to the other side of the boat. Because I don't really want my foreskin fittings, my, my foreskin fittings, sorry, right above my electrical panels. As we're putting the pipes roughly where we want them, I'm just taping them together in pairs so that, because uh, there are four bilge pumps, two heavy duty ones and two light, lighter duty ones. And I'm just taping the pipe work together in pairs uh, until we figure out exactly where it's going. We are then of course going to P-clip it and pipe, you know, put proper pipe clips and stuff to keep it all properly in place. So I don't, I'm not sure if this makes sense, but we haven't, we haven't done all the fittings yet, but we've got, three of our four pipes and they're going to come down this bulkhead uh, we can't turn at too sharp an angle at the top because it'll kink the pipe so we're coming down here i'm going to put an extra piece of plywood board in there to mount them to and then they'll come a nice smooth curve around the hull and after john's gone on another day i'm going to box that all in uh, by epoxying some blocks and putting some five mil ply over the top so that if somebody jumps in here and stands on them or if you drop stuff in here it doesn't kink the pipe you remember this little contraption with my bilge pumps? Well, I've now got on here the automatic sensor for the top bilge pump. We've routed all of our pipe work through, so that now goes out through the engine bay and up to the cockpit locker, where we've got some through holes to put in, and our cabling is all done, which, <laughs> which John is currently wiring into the fuse boards that Andy Darlington and I have fitted previously. We have actually trimmed this down a bit as well so it sits lower in the bottom of the bilge so it's it gets the you know quite close to the bottom of the bilge it's it's only an inch so if, if you imagine if you imagine the bottom of the keel is sloped and it comes in on this angle to there um, so the only bit of water that this is trapping is that much water which is about an inch and a half two inches but on that angle once we've got these two in we've then got to do some similar sort of thing for the bilge under the engine as well these are the forward ones yes and they're the rear ones okay they so don't do anything, they don't do anything yet so they're for the engine bay yeah but these two for the saloon we have auto auto right which and if i put the bottom one auto then as they well. both show green so if I do here's the, the bottom pump float on the bottom one that's now on auto and this one there, well, there go. you go so that's the sensor so i just uh, wet my fingers and it makes a connection 
across the two. And then if they, uh, you can then push the switches down and that's the manual position. The bilge pumps are now under the saloon floor, that's fine. They are, they're down there. Um, and they're, as you know, that whole plinth with those two bilge pumps, I can just pull it out. So I can put, after John's gone, I can pull it out, clean and paint that and put a, um, a false floor back in. Uh, the net and the two pipes that go to them are here and I'm going to put another floor in above these two pipes so that we can get in there, stand in there, store stuff in there without cr in, uh, crimping those pipes. That's our diesel tank by the way. Uh, the next thing is to put this lot, I'm going to remake this in stainless but this is a piece of stainless, uh, a piece of stainless um, box section with my two plinths, one for my big bilge pump. Now, this is from Whale, this is the Sahara. Um, this is, was sent to us very, very kindly. Uh, I'm still, I've asked them for another one of these and another one of those uh, automatic sensors. But for now, I've got the that, which is one of our old bilge pumps, which is still a decent pump. It may even be a Whale, but a very old one. And this float switch, which is the mechanical type. Please go in there, please go in there. Now that's too big. See that? I've made that and I'm glad I didn't do it all in stainless shenanigans because it's too big. So that, with the other pump removed, that see, oops, it's very tight, but it goes right down to the bottom of that bilge. But what I've got to do, what I've realized is that this one, plinth or no plinth, is wider than our keel box so I can only dangle it down I'm going to dangle it down and mark on the tube where it can actually go I'm just going to try and film this without dropping you in the bilge Hang on. right and then put a mark on the stainless tube which I can just about reach but now I know where I can actually sit that um, that pump okay so that's a big distance, but uh, this one goes right in the very, 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 very bottom of the engine bilge and it sits on that little aluminium plinth. This one is made out of aluminium angle and it's drilled and bolted and tapped and screwed. There's the, oops, oh no, oh, <laughs> there's the float switch which sits in the little cradle like so. So the two upper higher switches operate the two higher pumps and the two lower switches make a different sound. They operate the two lower pumps, the Saharas. And you can tell from the sound it's those two pumps. Perfect, that's done. This is almost finished. All the plumbing's done, all the wiring's done. I need to tidy that up and make it into a loom. Uh, and I'm gonna do that, I'm hoping, while Jonathan goes in the cockpit locker and starts looking at drilling holes for the, uh, for the skin fittings. So that's the wiring loom for the bilge pumps. It's all very, I think that's very tidy. This is all removable. I can just pull this and the whole lot will come out. That's the wiring loom, which all now works and it's nice and it's all out of the water. Well, there's no water in there anyway. Those two pipes are for the bilge pumps in the saloon. Those two pipes are for the bilge pumps in the, uh, in the engine bay. I'm just going over the capacity that we've got to pump water out of the boat. The Orca is 2000 gallons per hour and the Sahara is 1,200 gallons per hour. But I make that, right, 2,000 times two is 4,000, right? And 1,200 times two is 2,400. So that's 6,400 gallons. What's that noise? Oh, it's somebody's, somebody's bow thruster. <laughs> I was thinking, has our bilge pump's just gone on? No, they haven't, it's a bow thruster. So I make that 6,400 gallons per hour, right? 6,400 gallons in litres is 29,000 litres. So that's 29,000 litres per hour. 29,000 divided by 60 is 483 litres a minute. So that's one ICB every two minutes. Um, 483 litres per minute we can empty this boat at. I think if if we're emptying the boat faster than 483 litres a minute, we're going down. That's, uh, we've got more, our bilge pumps are 
massively more than what we need them to be. So thank you, Whale, because that is genuinely life-saving amount of pumpage, if that's even a word. Okay, so bilge pumps done. We do need to, um, bilge pumps are done now. We do need to put the through holes in the uh, gunnel. Uh, in the, just below the tow rail, but we can't because we're rafted up to another boat and I don't really want to be drilling holes uh, from the inside or the outside while we're rafted up to somebody else. I don't think that's fair. They're having a nice cup of tea on their boat. So when they move tomorrow, we'll finish this job and, and uh, draw a line under it by putting the through holes in the tow rail or just below it. Uh, so we're moving on from that job. Now, I believe we're moving on to freshwater tanks. Are we, is that what we're doing now, John? Well, it's your train set. Fresh water in. If you want us to do, what do you want us to do? Water tanks. So that we've got water. water tanks. Yeah, you're, water you're tanks. the boss. Yeah, water systems, water pumps. So Andy, how do you feel now you've got bilge pumps? Bilge pumps, good, yes. Getting water out, it's a very good idea. I'm very relieved more than anything. Not right, main stuff. so we've cleared the saloon again. Let me turn, we've got Jaws on the telly. I'm not gonna turn that off because you know, we're a vlog and it's, it's just natural. So <laughs> we've got these two seats. Uh, where our water tanks are. If you remember, apart from all the amazing stuff we've had from Whale, we also got given some bladder tanks by uh, boat breakers. So I'm going to get those out now. With the water pump that's on there, uh, it works perfectly. But every hour or half an hour, the pressure kicks back in. Uh, so it's obviously losing pressure, which obviously means there's a leak somewhere. So I think what we're going to do is uh, replace that, that tank which is the only one that we've got that works in a minute, with this one, because that will be the most easy direct swap. Uh, we'll install a new pump um, from Whale and we'll pressurise the system, see what happens. And this is the water pump I'm talking about, which is the pump and um, pressure vessel. Minging. So there's a bit of funky funkiness going on in here. Why use one bit of pipe when you can use 10 meters? And what we'll do is we'll probably just get a box, stick, pull all the fittings apart. Can you reuse fittings? We will do. Stick them in boiling water for a bit. We'll commission the tank and we'll fit the new water pump. We'll get some water to it and we'll pressurize these two legs and then we'll do like a leak down check. And then if we're in a situation where it's all really, really bad, then we'll just stop replacing everything. With John Gas fittings, there should be an insert in here. Cold doesn't matter if it's got an insert, but hot does. Mm -hmm. um, so water comes in this way, pressurised. This is pressurised, which stops like water hammer. So there's air in here, there's diaphragm. And obviously water goes out that way. Um, so obviously it takes pressure to push through this um, so it would go after the system. So just lovely fitting. I'm not nice. going to fit it here, this is just a quick demo for you guys. And what do you do to retain that against the wall? Do you have to have like a pipe clip? Oh, it's got retaining clips. Two retainers. It comes with clips. Okay. Turn the pump on. Here we are. Pump is on. Now it should pressurise and stop then. Lovely. So if you turn this tap on, now it's left. Just needs to get the air out, doesn't it? And hot should work as well because it should have filled the immersion heater up. Lovely. Should we try the half cabin one? So the half cabin at the moment. Good job the family's away. Welcome to Boat Jenga. Tetris. Right, so for ages 
our water system has had a, a drip on it, which has meant that it drips, which has meant that it depressurizes and the pump kicks in every now and then. We think we've found it. So that's the heater element that's leaking. This is the culprit. This is the heat element out of the calorifier. Uh, basically, it's an immersion heater, as I say, and the threads on it are all canarkered. So I'm just gonna, we're just cleaning up the threads. The situation is this, the boat is just such a mess and we're, we're rafted to two of the boats, which is, I feel really bad because the boat's complete, like everything from this locker is on the foredeck and um, people are having to sort of walk round, but there's a lot of foot traffic over our boat today. There's two of the boats and there seems to be a constant stream of people thumping their way across the foredeck. Um, and I, f I feel bad because I've left stuff out there, but at the same time, it's like, oh, really worries me the amount of people traipsing across there and they're not taking the shoes off. And they're not, again, I don't want to be that guy, but um, I might put a sign up saying bare feet, please, <laughs> not big work boots at least. Uh, anyway, um, enough whinging about that. Uh, it seems now that we are back in business. The leak is fixed. Is the leak fixed, Jonathan? Yeah. Yes, no, nice and simple. Um, the guys that first installed it, uh, they've galled the threads. So the threads were stopping, so it wasn't going, so let's put it this way, the bottle top wasn't being able to screw all the way on. Uh, and then put a um, silicon on there to try and help it seal it. So we've uh, chased the threads, we've put loads of PTFA on it, pressure test it and it's holding. But the, uh, the acid test is when the boiler gets up to temperature and, mm -hmm. uh, and it's not leaking in a few days. Shall I turn the boiler on now? While we're just reassembling stuff, the situation is now, um, what we've got, some of this pipe work we're still replacing with uh, stuff that Whale has given us, but this is the basic layout. Um, uh, this green hose, which I'm gonna change for some better quality hose, is coming from our water tank, feeding into this manifold, which feeds into the pump and the um, header tank, the, um, what they're called? Accumulator. Accumulator, missing the word. And that then feeds into the hot, the system via this blue pipe here. But the advantage of having this manifold on here means that now after John's gone, I can install the rest of the water tanks, the one on the starboard side and the one these ones here, eventually get these two tanks up and running. And I can literally just plug water tanks directly onto that manifold. And by using, you know, a freshwater hose pipe to connect them all up, I can get the, that type of hose and those type of fittings literally anywhere in the world, can't I? It's dead easy to get hold of. We've now got a system where we can get water out any way we want. So we can even connect one of these outputs. Um, we could we could even tee off one of those to go to our foot pump. If this oh, yes, pump if dies, pump fail, Jay, if this could... pump fails and uh, um, we're in the middle of nowhere and that pump has failed and we want to use the foot pump under the galley, yes. we can just unplug, uh, un turn one of those taps, turn it off, put the foot pump onto one of those fittings yeah. and the foot pump will pull water through. Yeah, exactly that. Yeah. We're sort of gradually, each piece of pipe we're taking out, we're replacing, because it was all white, we're replacing, you know, red for hot water, uh, blue for cold water, and at the moment green is coming from the tank into the manifold. That's the whole system down there, and this now. Have we got hot and cold on now? Yes. Right, yeah. So that that way gives us hot water, yeah, which is from directly from our um, water tank, which now doesn't leak, and that way gives us cold. Amazing. Awesome. And I was a bit too slow to catch it, but uh, we've got an inline charcoal filter. Yeah, that's the inline charcoal filter. And when you run them the first time, you get um, some black charcoal come out, which yeah. it'll run clear. So we've got, again, blue, cold water going through the charcoal filter, and red is the hot water going to the hot tap. We're back in the lazarette. Well, more to the point, John's back in the lazarette because we're now doing the through hulls, the skin fittings for the... Um, the Whereas some people say it's paint your boat time, this is put a hole in your boat time. Yes, absolutely. Hello. So we, what we're we using to seal these? We've just been and bought it from the chandlery. Geocell Marine Silicon Rubber Seal. I don't really like silicon as a rule. And, I don't uh, hate it, but it, it, £18.17 for a tube of silicon. That's, that's quite a lot. 
But um, and normally I would go Sikaflex, 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 but we can't get any where we are. And it's above the waterline and I'm sure it'll be fine. These only need to be finger tight anyway. Then they're, they're way above the waterline, right up at the top of the tow rail. So the well, chances uh, of them ever getting dunked are extremely slim. That is most certainly true. We'd have to be, we'd have to be pinned. Well, you, even if you put the tow rail in the water, you're not going to put that bit of the tow rail in the water. No. It's I'm going to squeeze while you just turn it. Oh, actually, no, you're all right. You're all right. Okay. Take it out of there thoroughly. Bring it around. Put it back on there, please. Back on. So, that's Andy's, that's Andy's in the Lazarette. How's it going, Andy? It's all right, but because we haven't put, we haven't vacuumed out the the dust from the from the fiberglass from drilling the holes. The, the fiberglass dust is acting like a lubricant and that means that I'm, I'm just sliding down the whole time. Oh, it's like a... <sighs> some sliding. Yeah. Right, well, we, well, we'll come back and find out. table from Precision Sales. Thanks for watching guys, at this point we set up the camera on the pontoon for a lovely little piece to camera saying a huge thanks to Jonathan for all his help and all that stuff. But I messed up and although I did have the external microphones plugged in I hadn't switched them on so there's no audio. So I'll do that now. Thank you so so much Jonathan for all your help mate, it was great to meet you and I had a really good few days hanging out. Thanks to Kathleen Connors, Greg Belito and Paul Rasmussen for contributions through coffee and thanks to our amazing patrons for supporting the channel and making these videos possible. If you'd like to become a patron and help support the making of these videos from as little as $3 per month then go to patreon.com forward slash sailing melody or click the link in the description. See you next week guys, bye!